Hey everyone, today I decided to do something a little bit different. There's a semi-popular anime called Food Wars, and I saw this really cool variation of Eggs Benedict featured in the show. And a lot of people on YouTube tried to recreate it, but failed pretty bad. Also, people forgot a special ingredient, smoked mullet row. It's also called kerosene in Japanese, however, I can't understand why nobody used it, because it is very, very expensive. WHAT?! WHAT THE FUCK?! Anyways, I think I've talked enough, so I'll shut up and show you what to do. So I'd like to start this recipe off by making homemade English muffins, because they have a far superior taste to store-bought ones and are a lot easier to make than you would think. Also, my dog likes them a lot, so sometimes I make them for if I'm too lazy to go buy real dog treats. So, moving on, add 1 teaspoon of extra dry yeast, a cup of flour, and 1 fifth cup of water to a small bowl. Then mix the ingredients together until they're homogenous. Then place a washcloth or towel over the bowl and let it sit overnight or 8 hours. So, after 8 hours is up, Add the yeast mixture to a bowl of sand mixer, add one cup of milk, and one teaspoon of active dry yeast, and then briefly whisk it using the whisk attachment. After that, add two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of melted butter. Also, if you can, try to use Irish butter, it has a higher butter fat content, so therefore the texture of the muffins will be a lot better when they're done. But if you don't have any, don't worry about it, your English muffins will still turn out just fine. Now just go ahead and mix those ingredients together using the whisk attachment for about 10 seconds. After you've done that, swap the whisk attachment with a dough hook, then add 3 cups of flour and mix it together for about 30 seconds. Eventually the dough will begin to form up on the dough hook, so that happens remove from the hook and begin to knead it by hand on a surface that has been lightly coated with flour. Knead the dough gently for about 2 minutes or until it forms into a cohesive ball that is both smooth in texture and doesn't stick to your hands. Then grab a bowl and cover it with a light film of vegetable oil. I personally recommend using olive oil because it leaves a nice taste when the muffins are cooked. Then place the dough in the bowl, cover it with pasta crap, and let it rise for about 8 hours, or overnight. Alright, so after 8 hours is up, take the dough out of the bowl and dramatically coat a countertop with some flour, and begin to roll out the dough until it is about 1.5 inches thick. Also, personally, I recommend using your hands to roll out the dough in the beginning, and then use the rolling pin once it becomes more pliable. Then using a ring mold, or preferably a round cookie cutter, I shouldn't have one, but you should use one if you do have one, begin to cut rounds from the dough. You should run up with a total of about 6 rounds, but you can always re-roll the excess dough and make more if you want. After you've cut out enough rounds, place them on a baking pan that's been coated with flour and cover it with a washcloth or towel and let it rest for 1 hour. Okay, so now you're almost done. So next up, generously coat a pan with butter and turn the heat to medium and begin to bake or I guess technically cook your English muffins for about 1 minute and 30 seconds on each side. You'll know they are done if they have a soft but firm texture and look golden brown. Once you've cooked all the muffin rounds, you're done! That's all it takes to make English muffins. So, time to move on to step 2. Oh, also, before I forget, it's my dog's birthday today, so don't forget to say happy birthday in the comments section. <coughs> so now we're going to make the hollandaise sauce, which is the second to last step before Eggs Benedict recipe. So start off by adding 5 egg yolks, a pinch of salt, a tablespoon of lemon juice, and a pinch of cayenne pepper to a blender, then blend the ingredients together on low for 5 seconds. Then increase the blender speed to medium and add in 1 cup of hot melted butter. Once you've added all the butter, go ahead and turn the blender off and set it aside. Okay, so now we're going to make some bacon. You should probably know how to do this by now, but if you don't, don't worry, I got your back. So grab a pan, set it to medium heat, and lay about 8 strips of bacon on the pan, cook them for about 4 minutes on each side, or until they're golden and crispy. Then set the bacon on a paper towel to drain off the excess grease. Okay, now we're almost done. Sorry, this video's been very long, but I'll try to finish this up as fast as I can. So next up, bring a large pot of water to a simmer, and crack two eggs into an egg poacher holder, at least I think that's what they're called. I don't know, I'm too lazy to find out. Then add some salt and pepper on top of the eggs, and let them poach with the lid on for about three minutes. If you like your eggs well done, poach them for about five minutes. They should look kind of like that when they're done. Now to finish off the egg benedict, grate some kerosene on top of an English muffin, add two strips of bacon, one egg, then top it off with some hollandaise sauce. Then if you like, top it off with some top chives, cayenne pepper, and some salt and pepper. And yeah, there you have it. That's all you need to do in order to create a perfect Food Wars inspired eggs benedict. Oh, before I forget, if you want to know how to make a classic Eggs Benedict, the only thing you're going to do is remove the Karasumi, and you'll be left with a perfect classic Eggs Benedict. Also, thank you so much for watching. Sorry for not posting anything from a story straight. 
I've been busy with school and things like that, but going forward, I'll try to post more consistently. Anyways, thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.